Hey everyone, Karen the Work Spinster here. Welcome to my channel. It has been a week and next week is going to be another one of those weeks. So today I decided I wanted to do something just kind of free and easy exploration. And I've chosen something that I've been wanting to do for a long time now. You can see the date up here is from 2012. <laughs> So it's been more than 10 years I've been contemplating it. This is something, um, an app that I like to use called Percolate. I will, I talked about this in a previous video and I will link that down in the description, but it takes a photograph and turns it into circles of different sizes and colors to match the photograph. And this is actually made from a photograph of one of my quotes from long, long ago, obviously, at least before <laughs> 2012, uh, it was called To the Nines, I think. Anyway, um, I have been wanting to explore doing a ton of circles like this. Now, some of them have very tiny circles, and I don't know that I will go quite that far with it. But today, I just want to explore different ways I might apply the circles to some background or substrate. <clears throat> so that's what I plan to do today. And I'm not going to worry about the design or the size necessarily. Just I want to try different sizes together or the colors of the fabric or anything. I may end up with something that I could use in a quilt or just make its own mini quilt or I may not. This is just to explore and see what kind of process we might use. So in short, this is not a how to make a quilt kind of video. Actually, none of my video, very few of my videos are how to make this quilt <laughs> kind of video. So if that's what you're looking for, thanks for stopping by. Please stay if you want to see what I'm talking about, but no hard feelings if you decide you want to explore something else. So for this exploration, I'm going to be using a bleached white muslin as the background. And then I have various scraps that I could use. I have some two and a half inch squares that will work for some of the smaller circles. And then I also have a bag of scraps. For the circles, to draw the circles, I have several sets actually of uh, templates for quilting. These are specifically for machine, uh, long arm machine quilting, but I guess they could be used for domestic machines as well. I don't anticipate that I'm going to be using any circles that large, although I could use the inside as a template. But I do have some smaller circles and templates that I could use. If you don't have templates like that, you can use anything round that's the size that you want. This is a roll of stitchery tape for when you're finishing uh, cross stitch or needlepoint projects kinds of things, and I could sketch around this. It will be a little, little funky in some places, but I can compensate for that when I'm cutting. But you can use bottle caps. This is the top of a starch bottle or spray can. Um, here's some lip balm, bottom of thread. You could also use a compass, which will give you a circle of whatever size you like. And of course, I'll be using some scissors. I could potentially use a rotary cutter with these, but I'm just, I find it kind of awkward to be cutting around, especially small circles and curves. So I probably will just be using a good scissors for that. For the things to draw on or to use as backing, I have some double-sided fusible web. This happens to be Steam Seam 2, but whatever you use will certainly work. And then I'm not entirely sure that I want to back it with a fusible web, all of them. I may want to try just some, some raw edge circles as well, in which case I will draw on the fabric itself. And then for one of the methods I use, I have an old file folder use oak tag, construction paper, whatever. Just a lightweight cardstock kind of thing. And with that, 
I think we can get started. I'm going to start with this piece of fabric from me and my sisters. I love this. This came out several years ago. I wish I'd bought a whole bulk of it. I just love this. So I can either choose just if I have a particular size of circle in mind, I could certainly use that, or I could find a circle that makes best use of, oh, that would be kind of fun. Do I want to put that in the center of something? That would be kind of fun. If I offset it, will it be all right? Or should I just do the center of something? Let me see what size I've got here. How about something like that? I'm going to lose, well, no, I won't lose it with this method. Um, I will be able to use that whole circle. So on the back, I am going to just use a pencil to draw around that. And this is just a mechanical pencil. Now, when you are drawing circles, I'm sure you all remember this from goodness knows, but you don't want it to be leaving the pencil at the same angle because then you aren't really getting the circle that's going to be distorted. So you want to keep it at a consistent angle and right up against the edge when you are tracing around it. Let's see if that's good enough there. Oh, that's plenty fine. So now I'm just going to take a scissors and cut around that and then we'll see about placing it and how I want to go about stitching that. Three quick things. Number one, my scissors could use a good sharpening. Two, I've got plenty left over to do another circle. And three, this has a little bit of a flat edge because that was the edge of the fabric that didn't quite fit in, but that's going to be okay. These edges, because I'm doing raw edge applique, are going to sort of be raveling anyway, so that won't matter. So now I'm going to place this on the fabric. In fact, I'm going to cut this fabric a little smaller because I'm going to want to be doing blocks with this in most cases anyway, and I don't want to be fumbling around a long strip of background fabric. So I'm just going to cut that, set that aside for another block. And now I'm going to be ready to stitch this. And this, of course, is where I have lots of options. I can do a line of stitching just inside here. I can do stitching here or both. Or I could do some sort of decorative or zigzag stitch around the edge. Um, but whatever I decide, and I can use any color of thread in any stitch, whatever I decide to do, however, I am going to put some stabilizer behind it just because these are two fairly thin fabrics and it just will be better all around. I won't have the puckering and, and pull up that I would have if I didn't put some behind it. Now, I don't know that I'm going to want backing behind all of the circles that I do with the various methods. So I'm going to cut this just large enough to fit behind here. But if you plan to do this same thing for all the circles, then you could certainly put this behind the entire backing piece. I have the stabilizer under there and I'm going to use this green thread, I think. And I definitely want to do just a plain stitch around here. I want to explore how things are going to look with different stitches. This is round, so I could do potentially a decorative stitch as long as it isn't too long because are they going to meet at the end the way I want them to meet or not? So initially I'm going to start out with this green thread and just a straight stitch around here. I could do this to where I follow that the edge of the circle pretty well so that the stitching is a circle as well, just a little bit inside here. Or I could do it in kind of a funky, unusual, not really paying attention to whether or not it's circular. Or I could do both. So do just a plain stitch and then do kind of a, a funky sort of jaggedy stitch. I'm thinking I might want to do something on the inside as well. Not entirely sure yet, but I'm going to get started with 
the plain stitch, just a straight stitch around in a circle, and then maybe try a, a jaggedy stitch as well. The jaggedy stitch could be done in another color. Maybe we'll talk about that after I do this. And here we have it. This is a trifle uneven down here, but it's fine. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, people, if people look that closely, then actually what they're going to see is ravels eventually. So that's all right. I think I want to do some kind of funky, just zigzaggy, jerky kind of thing around there. And I think I'll use pink thread for that. I wound a new bobbin for the green, which I should have looked at the bobbins I already had wound. I had a green. I also happened to just happen to have this pink already wound on a bobbin. So I can do some fun things with that. And I also have some gold, so I could play with some gold as well. I may sort of continue that color scheme through this sort of practice piece. We'll see how it goes. All right, so I've got the pink jerky kind of thing here. I did this just by using my needle down, stitching a couple of stitches and turning, but you could certainly use free motion quilting for this as well. I am using a matching thread in the bobbin because technically if your machine's tension is really, really good, you probably don't need to use that, or you could just use a bobbin thread bobbin, such as you might use for machine embroidery. But I didn't want, this is going to be, um, I would call it kind of a little extra treat when someone gets closer. And if they're close enough to see this, then I also don't want them to see that little loop that goes over the thread on the top from the bobbin. So that's why I'm matching. I could also use invisible thread um, in the bobbin and make sure I adjust my tension because invisible thread, especially if you're using cotton in the top, there's you know some differences in, might be some differences in tension needed. So this does not show up a lot. I purposely started it in the pink area here because that's where I wanted to do a little back stitching to hold it and it would be less noticeable there than in the green. But then I tried to come out into the green to make it a little more contrasty and obvious. Now, I think that's all the stitching I'm going to do on this particular one. Let's try a different method for the next circle. For the second circle, I want to use this pink because I'm lazy and I already have pink in the machine. <laughs> Although I may want a contrasting color. I should think about that. Now this one we're going to do as just pink on pink, I think, because that's one thing I want to explore. What does it look like if I just do so it's um, invisible, relatively speaking. So this time I'm going to use this double-sided fusible web, draw the circle on here, fuse it to the back of this fabric and then cut out the circle. Then I can fuse it to this fabric. I think I will still put some stabilizer behind it just because I want that extra stability as I'm stitching. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put it. Probably reasonably close to this. Um, that's how the percolate things go and I like that look. So I think I will put it pretty close to this one. And the size, I'm gonna want it pretty small, I think. Either very small or very large. And I think that might be about the size. This is going to be very tiny when I'm going around. So I will shorten my stitch length when I'm going around this. But I will get the circle cut out, fused onto here, and I will also make sure I have stabilizer behind wherever I'm putting it. And just as a little review, pardon my fingernails and cuticles, like I said, it's been a week. Um, rather than try to separate the backing here from uh, the edge here and risk raveling it, and on this smaller piece, a little ravel could be quite a bit. I'll just score it on the back with a pin and then I can it's hard to do this without a thumb nail. All right, so <laughs> score with a pin and then just pull it from the center and that will 
be better for the edges of the circle. When you aren't trying to do it through a camera lens, you will probably do it more smoothly. And I think if I put this right here, you can see the, hopefully the edges of the stabilizer there. So I could just put it right up close. I don't want it to be on top of it. I'm not looking to overlap things at this point. So then I can fuse that down. And I think I'm going to just do a small zigzag, a narrow zigzag, and probably pretty close together be, um, because I need, whoops, see, I'm pointing <laughs> to it on the camera instead of here. Um, this is a pretty tight curve, it being such a small circle, so I will shorten the stitch length and make the uh, stitch narrower as well. Just a simple zigzag. And I rather like that. If I had wanted this to be absolutely perfect, I should have shortened the stitch and made it even narrower, and that would have been more consistent around it. I had to pivot a couple of times because the stitch was not quite close enough together, but you may have noticed about me that I kind of like funky, wonkified things, so <laughs> I actually like that look, and I like the stitch being bigger. Relative to the size of the circle, Traditionally, you would make this a narrower stitch, um, shorter shorter and narrower stitch here. But I like this way. I wanted to have some sort of decorative quality to the stitching around there. So that works for me. And now I want to look at a third way, which is how I usually do circles if I don't want a raw edge applique effect. Look at this. I went to my circle stash and I found a circles, some circles that might be used here. Not sure about, and I guess that gold's pretty good actually. Not quite orange, but, and one that's already, hmm. so I can make progress on this faster than I thought. This one is uh, using the method that I typically use for circles. This one has some batting in there, so it's poofier than it usually is is and the edges aren't as sharp and crisp as they usually are but this gives me a turned under finished edge i like to do hand applique so typically i would use hand applique for this although you could certainly use a machine applique as well so let me show you how i do that method the first thing i want to do is cut a circle out of this oak tag cardstock this is an old file folder. I can use the circles that I've been using before, however I've been, whatever I've been using to make circles, to draw the circle, or I could use paper punches. I have circle punches of various sizes. And let me think about, well, maybe I should find the fabric I want and then I'll decide what size circle or punch I need to use. I'll go with this green. And I need to have an edge around it. So the size of the circle has to be enough to accommodate about a quarter of an inch all the way around. So I think I'm going to use this one and three eighths inch punch. But of course I could use any of my other tools to make whatever size I want. So I will just punch this out. Sorry about the punch sound. And there we have our circle. So now I need to cut roughly a circle that is a little larger than the circle itself. Doesn't have to be a perfect circle. I can certainly make it that way if I want, but it doesn't need to be. And I will do that and come back. You don't need to watch me cut a circle. I am using a double length of string here. I've got it doubled up in my needle with a knot on the end. You don't have to use a matching thread. I usually take it out in the end anyway, but I thought the dark gray would be easier for you to see. All I'm doing is, is a gathering stitch near the edge, and I'm going to pull it up like you do a yo-yo. So you don't have to have teeny tiny fine stitches, but you do want them to be small enough that when you pull it up, it's going to be even around here and you won't end up with puckers and, and peaks. 
So I'm going to start it with the knot on the outside, on the, the right side, because it's going to be pulled into the inside and I want that to be accessible to me when I pull the thread up. So I don't really need the circle in the center unless I've cut it really, really close and I did not, I've given myself plenty. So all I'm doing is just a gathering stitch or a running stitch all the way around. I'm probably, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch from the edge. I want it close enough that it isn't going to be, uh, I want it far enough away that it isn't going to be raveling as I do this. Now, as I'm coming up toward the end here, I'm going to overlap just a little bit, but I'm not going to cut into that. I'm not gonna split that first thread. So here's my first stitch right here. I want to go a little bit past it, but I do not want to cut that stitch and I want it to end up again on the right side of the circle, which at the moment is the underneath side and pull that through. Now it's gathered up a little bit, that's all right, because we're going to gather it up anyway. So then I put the, the circle as much in the center as I can, though it isn't critical that it be perfectly so, you could just eyeball it. And then I'm going to pull this thread and I'm going to do it gently enough that I'm not breaking that thread, but firmly enough that I get it tightly drawn up around it. And then this is the, one of the reasons that I want to have this, um, the start and stop on this side is because now I want to take just a little stitch there to hold it. And I'm going to give a little tug on the thread just to make sure it's still fully gathered. And then when you turn it over, you see you have a nice smooth edge on there. So I'm gonna put another knot in just to hold it for the moment. Clip the thread and now I've got a couple of options. I can take it, well, I'm gonna take it over to the iron regardless, but I could take it over to the iron now and give it a good press so that you can see those edges are nice. And then I check to see if I've got any gathers there that are going to make a jagged edge. And these look pretty good. You can see that's a little, a little bit funky on the gathering in that spot. And I can just sort of adjust, see if there's anything I need to change. You want it to be regular. This is, this is about perfect here. My stitches were reasonably regular there because that makes it look better on the other side. It's often um, you can run into trouble here where you've come up at the end and you're staying that stitch. So now I'm going to spray this with a little bit of Best Press. You can do a little bit of uh, starch on a paintbrush. So I'm gonna do it spray with just a little bit of best press and then I'll move my iron over here so you can see how I press this. I don't need to soak this in best press or starch and now when I am pressing it I'm not going to just plunk it down I'm going to go from the outside edge in and that will help to control you can see that that pushes those gathers toward the middle and away from the edge. So it makes the edge smoother and it's pulling it right up against the edge of that cardstock. You don't want to use too much starch on it because you will make the cardstock a little bit too wet and it may not hold that edge very well. So I'm just coming from the outside in to move those gathers to the center and then I can do a good full press of it. Then I can pull out the card. I can just reach in and pull it out. I've pressed an edge there, but I like to, I'm gonna use my smaller scissors here. I like to go in and trim it inside this thread so that 
I'm cutting off the thread, but I'm not cutting off the entire edge here. These scissors are not the sharpest thing on the planet, but I think it will get it done. So now I have an edge still to turn under, but it's not a very bulky edge. So now I'm going to go back and again, just press that up against that cardstock. I pressed it again, and now I can reach in and just pull out the cardstock. And I could go back and repress it so it's a little flatter, but that's all there is to it. If you are appliquing onto a background, which it's pretty much what you do with applique, isn't it? Then you could also leave the card in, applique this on, and you would need to do this, um, probably hand applique would be best, but I guess you could do it by machine. And then once that's stitched on, you could go back cut a slit in the back of the fabric, go in and pull the card out if you want to make sure you've got that good sharp edge on it. I used to do that. Um, I don't very often anymore. I like to leave the background sort of as a stabilizer. But if you need to reduce bulk or you want to stuff this after the fact or whatever, you can pull the card out later, but it necessitates that you slip that back. All right, so there's another option. Let's take a look at, this one's poofy, so I'm, I'm not gonna use this one, but we'll just use it as kind of a place. Well, maybe we won't. Try out some other colors arranged here, different sizes and colors. I think ultimately what I would like to do is cut some more, say this size and fill them in. If we look at this, piece again you can see that they're putting large size circle large-ish size circles next to each other when they can and then they fill in with smaller circles I, I may or may not well you know instead of those very smallest circles i could do say french knots or something because i got addicted to french knots when i was doing my uh spinning room quilt so I think that I might do something like this. Let me just kind of pin that there for the moment. And a relatively unobtrusive pin. I will hand applique that later. And then say if I want to put this piece here, maybe that one here, then I want another small circle in there, which could be another green, or I could make it that darker green if I can find one. I found this green, which I think will work pretty well. It is apparently a hand dyed green because when I sprayed it with a little bit of best press to get out some creases, I can see that it discolored it a bit. The model look is fine, I don't mind that. So I wanna do another circle this size, which I think came from the inside of this circle. And I may as well do a couple of them while I'm at it. I'm going to do a couple circles. I'm doing this with the double-sided fusible web method. So I will do a couple, three of those, I guess, and we can play around with that. We have a couple of green circles now that I can fit in, I think somewhere around here. And I can kind of match that curve maybe. I want them pretty close together. I'm wondering if I'm going to end up doing another smaller one there, or I could do something like this, move that down here or over here, or goodness knows where. Now this green looks a little bit vapid, doesn't it? <laughs> oh. 
but starting an arrangement like that is what I'm looking for, I think. And then I will have to decide what I am doing in here. I'm almost thinking, what if I did a quite small circle, obviously very small circle, plugged it into there, and instead of going around it, I did like a cross over it, an X. Or maybe more than one X. All right, I'm going to go ahead and fuse that one down and probably also fuse that one. I need to put some fusible under it, or maybe I'll just stitch around it for the moment just to get us started. And it could be another raw edge like that one. And fuse these two down. That one can stay pinned, might baste it. And then I'll try a little tiny circle in there and we'll see what we can do with an X. Now we are getting into quite finicky territory, but I quite like it. It will still need something in here, which will probably turn into French knots or something like that and spaced around as well. Let's see if a smaller circle there will. It's really not going to be much difference there. So I think I'll just continue to go with this pink here. And I'm thinking about color distribution at this point. Clearly I am figuring I'm going to be making <laughs> a mini quilt or something out of this. I want some more of this with a larger bit in it somewhere around here. Probably something about that size, I'm guessing. After this video, but before I post it, I think I will go ahead and hand applique this. Hmm. Do maybe just a straight, straight stitches on these two and maybe do it in white. See what that's like. Something else with these and I'll do a, no, maybe on this one I'll, um, once it's fused, do a zigzaggy thing on the outside, but the, the jerky type like I did up here, add a little more interest to it. it. And then a straight stitch on this, but I think I will do both of those in white. This one, I might be consistent in pieces this size in doing this sort of zigzag thing. And then this, you know what, let's pin these on and I want, to, well, no, I could do it with that. I know where those will go. I'm going to fuse this on and then do the X across it and see if that's going to work. I think that worked out fine. I used my favorite sort of railroad stitch there because it stitches back and forth across itself. I thought it would be too much to have that stitch again on the cross piece, so I just did a straight stitch on there. But I think that's okay. It adds a little something to it. Between that and the fusible, it should hold it down. It will ravel a little bit, but it's going to stay in place. All right, I am going to put these down in at least some rudimentary fashion, these that are not fused. I will hand applique that, and then I want to do another circle out of this fabric to put down here. And I will have, and then maybe do some, I don't know, French knots or something in there, and then I'll have a photo of that. So I'm looking at French knots to kind of fill in here, where in the sample that I showed you on my iPad, they would be tinier circles, but there are limits to how tiny I want to cut a circle, how tiny I can cut a circle. Let me do, if I just freehand a little teeny tiny one, it could be pretty bad, but let's see what we've got. <laughs> you know I'm not so very good at circles, but let me try one. And no, I'm not letting you watch. I'm off camera because it will make me nervous if I try to do this on camera. These may be just 
too small to manage the ravel. So there's a little tiny piece, which I guess I could try stitching that down. See what happens. It doesn't look like a circle. Maybe it isn't a circle. I was going to say it doesn't look like it because of the color change, but it doesn't look like it because it actually has a point there instead of a curve. Maybe. I'm not sure I want those two right next to each other, or maybe I do. If I put that there. I'm going to leave that space open. Let me know below if you think I ought to leave that in there and then just do a simple cross thing on there. I'm going to have this cut down to nothing by the time I keep cutting off all these points the raveling makes. So I think what I would prefer to do actually is to get some teeny tiny circles drawn on uh, the fusible web and try putting those down. That might not be too bad. And then, you know, some French knots or beads or something in the <laughs> in the interim spaces. I'll play around with it a little bit and then do a photo or maybe another quick video at the end of... As you can see, I've already changed my mind <laughs> about what I want to put where. I think I want this here, although I didn't try it down here. Mm -hmm. Decisions, decisions, and then this would move over here further, probably. It's kind of nice not having these two fabrics together. The why I think it matters when those are together is beyond me. Yeah, maybe that's better there. I want to get some continuity with this going through it. So I think that will work. And again, I'll need some small circles down around in there, but that is doable. Here we are, not much further than I was before. Life took a turn for the chaotic here and they're doing yard work all over my house with lots of noisy equipment and things are really in chaos so haven't had a chance to do much i did hand applique this on and i just really do like the look of the hand applique i have had a couple other thoughts about what i might try with some of these circles they'll be embellishment kinds of things but I want to try them out and see how they look when there are a lot of circles around. So that's something we'll do next week, assuming chaos is not still <laughs> ensuing back here. I'm surrounded by my backyard here when I'm doing the filming, so all noise and things going on will affect whether or not I can film. So can't promise it, but we'll see. And so we'll continue with this next week, maybe talk about other things, not sure which, but I think this video has probably gone long enough anyway. So I hope to see you next week. I hope to be here next week. In the meantime, be well, be safe, be happy, be quilting. Peace out.